Hey guys, this is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Today I wanted to talk to you about trimming out a pocket door, like installing it, trimming it out, and everything like the casings. So the first thing that I wanted to do was just show you the opening here. And by the way, I made a video about installing this Johnson 1500 pocket door frame. I will link to that up here in the right hand corner of the screen and also in the video description below the video if you want to see about installing the frame part before drywall. So now that drywall is done, painting's done, it's time to hang the door. I got some requests for making a second video here, so here goes. All right guys, so if you remember from our previous video, the hardware pack that you're not supposed to remove until the door's installed, I removed it anyways because it was in the way of leveling the header, which I talked to you about. There's our hardware pack. So the first thing we wanna do in order to get our door ready is in the hardware pack here is a bumper, rubber bumper. So we wanna install that, measure up 40 inches on the back side of the door, fasten it right here in the center of the door, like center sideways, 40 inches up, and that's what we're gonna do first. So measure up 40 inches, rubber bumper with one of those little gold screws, and we center it right here, see my mark? This doesn't have to be perfect, it's just approximate. There, that's your rubber bumper. So now we're gonna install these on top of the door here. You're gonna measure in two inches from each side. So two inches from here over to the edge and fasten those, just center them. Make sure that you turn both this one and that one down there the same direction for these tabs here. So that's what it looks like with both of these installed, both tabs facing the same way. All right, now the next thing we wanna do is install our two rollers up in here. Gonna slide them right up in this space up here. So you wanna turn one one way and turn the other the other way. So like this one, first one I put in has two wheels on this side, one on this. Now this one I wanna alternate it because it helps to spread the weight around. So this one can stay here. And that one's for the other side of the door. All right, so it's gonna be really hard to show it actually on the video from me hanging the door, but the bottom part of those rollers I just put in slide right in here and then you close this to lock it. So that's all you do and you're good to go. I wanted to show you how to do it if you have the 1060 soft close kit. You actually have to move this down to two and three quarter from the edge instead of two inches. That's why I moved it. So I wanted to show you that. The instructions show two inch for the regular but they show two and three quarter for the soft close kit. So make sure to do that if you're doing the soft close kit. I'm gonna talk quick about this soft close hanger kit that I was talking about. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna be installing it here, but I wanted to show you. And if you're not familiar with this, I'll kind of talk about it in another video. I can link to that right up here in the right hand corner. Yeah, so I'll show you how to install this one as well in this video. I highly recommend this soft close hanger. It works really well. If you're interested in it, I'll include a link in the video description below the video where you can find it if you want. All right guys, so now if you're installing the 1060 here, the soft close kit, I wanted to show you this way too in case you're doing it. Now you have to make sure that this is in the engaged position. This thing here, see how it can slide like this? You have to make sure before you put it in there that it slid all the way this way. And then just do the same thing, start it right here. So we're gonna slide that one that way. So yeah, now the front one, you just Put it in like this. So now we're ready to hang the door. So I got the door in. I ended up having to use a flat pry bar to help me pry up on the bottom down there. And then that little tab up there, I was able to push the roller over into there with a flat screwdriver and then push that tab in to lock it. So now this part right here, we're gonna wait to put this up in here and fasten it until we get the jam built. If we do it beforehand, then the spacing is going to be wrong because they want you to do two and a quarter from the finished jam to the edge of this. So if you do it beforehand, it'd be about three inches, but we don't know exactly. So we're going to wait until we're all done. So then the first thing you want to do is put this front jam on right here. And what I did, since I don't have a finished floor, which you may not either, if you do have a finished floor already, you can uh, just put it against your floor. But if not, I'm gonna put a half inch plywood under there to allow for my floor that I'm putting in. 
So that's what I'm gonna rest it against. So you wanna do that and then just measure the length of it up there, all the way up to the top there. And now in this case here, try to show this a little better. I'm gonna point with my tape measure here since I'm not over there, but right in here, since this bumps out a little with the screw heads and all that, what I'm gonna do is just cut a little bit of relief in the back of the jam part to compensate for that. So you can just measure what that is. So what you gotta do is put this piece in first, and then these pieces here, you have to rip them, and we'll talk more about that later, and then you have to put these in last. I got everything in, so I wanted to show you. This here is where I was talking about cutting a relief in the back of the jam, the first one you put in. So then I ended up having to shim it a little bit at the top to get it level, and a little bit at the bottom. So what you do, close the door, and then you check to reveal all the way down. So you wanna shim it until it looks really nice, like that. Then when you do that, then you wanna cut your split ones for the sides here, and you wanna put them on, they say to leave about a 3 16th gap on either side of the door. So you wanna do that, you can measure that. For me it was one and 7 16th. And then the only way that you can do it is there's holes in the metal behind there. I ended up having to drill to get through that one. But what you can do is mark them. I marked them over here on the drywall before I installed the piece. And then that way you know where to screw it. And so you almost have to use trim screws for that part. And then for the upper part, you just measure that last, fit them in between there. And then you can nail those up through there. I didn't show it on the other door, but these are the holes I'm talking about that you can screw through. So if you make a mark right here on the side, then you can see it when you're screwing your trim pieces on. The last thing you want to do is put your stopper up in there for the soft close, and then you want to measure two and a quarter inches right there. Then that way, I'll show you what it does. So then to close it, you'll see it in action here. I don't have handles on this, so I'm just gonna pull the door. Watch how that soft close works. Works awesome, just nice and gentle. Same for the soft open. It's nice, it just slows it right down and stops it. So I wanted to show you really quick what I did up here on this. I went just about an inch and a half, just a tad under, on both uh, sides of the door. That just gives me a little bit of room. See, I got about an inch and three quarter in between the gap there, and it's about an inch and three eighths that the actual door is. So it gives me a three eighth of an inch to split all the way down through. So that's just what I did. I did that on the side there where the door is, like that. And I also did it on the top there. So yeah, I do apologize for the background mess sometimes because I am living in the house, but it's still a work in progress. I wanted to show you here, I did painted trim, so it didn't make a big deal that I made the nail holes. You can see some of them stick out in this lighting and you still need to do some more caulking. I need to do a little bit more caulking right there where it's separated a little bit, but it's no big deal. So I did a quarter inch reveal from my jam to my casings. I did an inch overhang on the header. That's just how I chose to trim it out. You can do however you want, but I just wanted to show you that. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about really quick is when you're doing baseboard back in here in the cavity where this door is, you're gonna have to be really careful and use short nails for that part of it. I ended up having to glue some of it because I didn't want to use too many nails because you only have that one support back in there and you want to make sure there's no nails in the way. So I did want to share that word of caution. But hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how I trimmed it out. I did not get to paint up in there. Um, it'd be easier to do it before, but I was in a hurry, so I'm gonna to have to do that later, as you can see that. But it's really not too big of a deal. You don't notice it too much, but I did want to show you that part that you may want to touch that up. So this is my other pocket door that I installed in my first video that I did when I roughed it in. I did it in the bathroom here, and it turned out really nice as well. This one's a little bit narrower, I believe, than the other one, but I just wanted to show you it. I didn't get around to putting a handle on it yet. If you do put a handle on your pocket door, you want to make sure that it's made for a pocket door so it's inset, so it won't rub when you open and close it. But yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy with these Johnson Hardwares and the 1060 Soft Clothes Kit. 
I might mention that quite a bit, but it's just the most excited I've ever been about a pocket door because of the soft close feature and the soft open. It is just so cool. Just like when you have it on your cabinet hardware. And like I said, if you want to check out this 1060 soft close kit, I'll include a link in the video description below the video where I found it, where you can find it for the best price that I could find. And yeah, so check it out there if you're interested in it. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions about how I trimmed this out. Hopefully these tips were helpful to you, kind of as a follow-up video from my previous video. And be sure to subscribe to my channel for future videos of all kinds, DIY type stuff. And check me out on Instagram, at SmartEasyDIY, for kind of daily behind-the-scenes stuff of what I do, just day-to-day -day life. And thanks for watching, guys.